is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Welcome to this week's podcast for your author success with the Author You, your guide to book publishing show. And as you listen, you'll get a variety of ahas, insights, tips, and how to's for your author publishing and book marketing success. And I can't think of a better way to, to look at the prism of kids' books than with a book designer who is seeing all kinds of sizes, shapes, styles, uh, ideas, concepts, what works and what doesn't work. With me is Nick Zellinger, who is a multi, 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 multi award-winning book designer, graphic designer. Um, disclaimer, Nick has uh, uh, laid out, designed several of my award-winning books, and he's one of my favorite designers to work with. Why? Because he's flexible. He listens. He has ideas. He will actually say, mm, don't go down this road. And that's what you need on your team. So, Nick, welcome back to Author You, Your Guide to Book Publishing. Thanks, Judith. Thanks for having me on today. I'm excited about this subject. Yeah, it is. Well, you know, you are an award-winning book designer for both us adult book people writing and and for kids. And I, I think it's important that we do tackle the challenge of how to create a, a children's book that an author can be really proud of and not have to apologize for, which you and I have seen those books. Is that not true? That is very true. It, and it's, it's, I mean, all books are challenging, but I think children's books come with their own special uh, challenges and, um, you know, um, rewards and um, disappointments. So it's good to get off on the right foot, especially with uh, when you're hiring illustrators and, you know, you have a team to work with. So. And and that's what we want, so they can describe. So I would love to have a kiss on illustrators and what works and what doesn't work, because I know you and I have moaned and groaned with several of them over the years together in our journey. So that's true. Yeah, that's true. Um, I think um, you know we we usually come into the project when uh, an author's already hired an illustrator. And then we find out that for a variety of reasons, uh, the art doesn't work or some of the, some of the art doesn't work. Uh, and a lot of this can be avoided. And I think avoiding these problems at the get-go is going to save the author, aside from aggravation and disappointment, it's going to save them a boatload of money. And, and you know, Nick, you're absolutely right about the boatload of money. I remember I had an author come in, and she flew in. She was in for a couple of days to work with me, and she had gotten all her book all together, and we literally laid it out. We went around. We cleared. I had my whole conference table cleared, and we went around. You know, this is a less than 40-page book, and so we laid it all out. The inconsistencies in the artwork were stunning were stunning that there were times the little boy looked five years old which is what he was supposed to look and at times he looked like a teenager and this this book was not about aging <laughs> it was not about aging it was about a five-year-old and so it was it was just really you know uh, uh, scary for me to see that because when she revealed how much money she spent on all these illustrations you know it, technically, she should throw them all out. And wow, and, yep. yeah, yeah, and, and and eventually she did. She went totally. Well, I think it's, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that's the the you know I mean the biggest challenge an, an author has aside from just writing a book is finding out what your illustr what how you and then if you're not an illustrator and looking for one, what does your book want to look like? What do you, I mean? What's your age group? 
or what's the style of art you want, what's the medium you want the uh, artist to, to work in. All those are factors that are going to come into play when you hire somebody and then also what it's going to cost you. I mean, are you going to have... Uh, stories on every, you know, text on every page and spot illustrations, or you can have full page illustrations, because that will determine pricing too. I mean, I took a little bit of time this week and actually talked with a couple of uh, award winning illustrators to kind of get their workflow ideas and how they, how they approach their projects and what they charge and, um, and how they set up, how they set up the, um, project themselves with an author. So it kind of gave me a good feel for uh, the challenge that the illustrators have working with authors vice, well, and vice versa. I think that's where we ought to start because kids' books. Well, let, let's talk about ages. So at what age do you have illustrations, Nick? When You know, you've been designing books for a lot of times. When do they work and when are they not necessary? Well, you know, you when you're, if you're, if you're uh, doing a picture book, a children's picture book, and the goal is to it be a uh, a book that um, you know a caregiver, a parent, guardian can read to someone. Uh, you know that's a different thing versus uh, a book that will be a primary reader. In other words, a beginning reading less um, uh, for a child to re- start reading their own. So obviously the language will change, and a lot of that is. Um, Depending on depending on what the author's uh, book is about and what they want to what they want to do, they want to make this a reader for a child or or a combination of uh, you know sitting on sitting on sitting by their mother and father or, or some grandparents and, and reading along with them so that they can pick out the words. So there, right there, the language is going to change, uh, and some research will come into play with. Uh, how you write a book for beginning readers versus uh, maybe something that's just read to them. So what ages so are they? Yeah. There's a challenge there. Yeah. So, you know, well, full, look, full on pictures books, you've got anywhere from two-year-olds who like the board books, right? You know, they'll yeah. have their board books. You you have you certainly have cloth books for little ones. But but the toddler groups are going to be mostly into the board books. And then you start getting into those full blown the big the big, you know, eight by ten by eight or eight by eleven, whatever right. size. Th- those are going to be for the under six year olds, I usually think. Is that is that where you're yeah, thinking? I think you're, you're right. Yeah, you're right. I mean books that they can like I say, sit along with somebody to, to read or look at pictures or by themselves. And, the, the, and they, you know, there's a variety of sizes that authors can choose from in that. And then, I mean, looking back and remembering my daughter, and I she read, read from a very early age. I think she might have been starting reading at three. I'm not sure. Just, uh, I can't remember that far back. But, you know, they were picture books with uh, text over the illustrations or, you know, a text on one side and um, illustrations on the other. And uh, so, you know, I think some of that is dependent on, I mean, the author has to figure out what their age group is, you know, who they're writing for. And I think, I think most, I think most authors know that. I mean, I think that's why they're writing a book anyway for children. Uh, well, because there's obviously lessons to be learned or it's not just a reader, but there's some lessons of, you know, experience or, Mm-hmm. you know, values to be you know, obtained from reading it. Well, and I think it's really important for authors. Uh, actually, I've, I would need to say this, it caveats for this. I've had a lot of authors not understand what age they're really writing for. They think that four yeah. to nine is the same thing. It is absolutely not. <laughs> it is. That is true. It, it is absolutely not. But the under six group, it, you can be pretty safe that those are big, bold pictures and the visuals carry the book. You're going to have simpler words. You'll have less words mm-hmm. in those books. Um, and then they, I, I like the way you broke out the picture book, the primary book, and then there's a chapter book. Um, right. and, and that, it, you know, and that progresses with age. And like where you have your daughter, Jenny, who started reading at three, I had one of those, too. Um, and then I had another one that, you know, reading, really? <laughs> that was his attitude. <laughs> so so it's, it's a variable. 
um, on it. It is. It is. So it does take some, you know, so it takes some research for the, the author. And I think for the most part, I mean, I I obviously have seen books and done books where, you know, I thought the language was way beyond the scope of of the age group when you compare it to the illustrations, for instance. So sometimes there's a little bit of a mismatch. But I think this just requires some research by, by an author. You know, look at look at the books, look at the best selling books, children's books, illustration books for the age group that they're and most of those things on Amazon will tell you what the age group is for. Um, I know a lot of I work with a lot of uh, educators uh, and they have a you know, I obviously have a lot of information and knowledge about who they're writing for in terms of uh, an illustrated book. Mm-hmm. And, and that really helps then, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it does. So that just that initial, just that initial research, and then of course, you know, looking online, looking for an illustrator, looking for the type of art you want your book to look like, and of course that will be cost driven. I mean, there's there are a lot of avenues now where you can find illustrators online, um, and you just need to do your due diligence to you know. Now we're talking about online sites like Fiverr or Upwork where you can go in and do someone's portfolio and find out what they charge and see if their art, the type of medium of, you know, whether it's watercolor or pen and ink or colored pencil or whatever. Uh, it, and it, run, it runs the gamut. It runs the gamut from very, very simple art to fine art. So it depends on what you want to pay. Mm-hmm. And it's it. So, so Nick, and, uh, why don't yeah, why don't you say them again? Because we're going to take our first break. But Fiverr is one. Everybody, F I V E R R. You can yep, check out and portfolios Upwork. and up up what? Upwork. U P W O R K. Upwork. All right. Upwork. And they so, have a, yeah. Yeah, and the other thing I would suggest is that if you have a sample of something that you like. Uh, that show it to the person to see what they can do to emulate it or take it from there. All right, with that, we'll be right back with this is Nick Zellinger. We're talking about creating a rock star kids book. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Is there a book in you or another? Author You shows you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being hoodwinked. If you already have a book out, you will find a supportive and brainstorming community that is connected and creative no matter where you live. Author You brings in national experts for its book camps and annual Author You extravaganza. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author You's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publishing. Author You is the premier authoring resource in the country, creating community, education, guidance, vision, and success for the serious author. If you want to create a book that has pizzazz, punch, and panache, Author You is for you. Timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted on its social media platforms, and it is free. Discover Author You, where authors go to become seriously successful. Join Author You today at authoryou.org. Are you confused about publishing options? Do you know which printing option is best for your book? Does your stomach flip when you think about selling books? Or do you feel overwhelmed with what to do about book marketing and publicity? Get the answers and much more. Get them and from someone who knows publishing inside and out from both the traditional and independent sides how to make a successful book. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand and platform, and is a success, a bestseller. It is your choice. You choose. If you want author and publishing success, you want Judith Bryles as your book coach. 
Sign up for her weekly blogs and easing at thebookshepherd.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. With me is Nick Zellinger of NZ Graphics, uh, who is a multiple award-winning book designer. He has over 30 years of experience in graphic design, print media, and publishing. And between himself, because he is an author as well, and his clients, they've they've garnered more than 150 national and international book awards. What I love about Nick is he has a huge dedication to detail. He's committed to deadlines, and he's truly fervent belief that being a team player is essential for the success in the publishing world. Um, that has really kept his clients, including yours truly, coming back and back. So with that, Nick, we were, you know, you gave a couple of tips looking for illustrators at reasonable prices using either Upwork or Fiverr as the door open in. I suggested as we went into the break is that if you've got a style that really resonates with you, um, I would show it to the illustrator and see if what they can do around that or, or do some tweaking and make it their own. Do you think that's crazy, Nick, or? No, not at all. I mean, I think that's, I think that's the best way to approach it. I think if you go on something like Fiverr, you can um, look at an artist's portfolio and then find if their style is anywhere near that. I mean, that's what you want. You want some, do something that's polar opposite and maybe mm-hmm. not, not have a chance to, to do that. But I guess, I think that's a great way to do it. It's, it's, you save some time, and it also uh, nothing is more would be more disappointing than to hire an illustrator and find out that the artwork is nowhere in the ballpark of what you envision. So you really yeah, it's so, the case as quick as you can. So they have star, you know, like Fiverr has five stars. I would want to work with someone with just all five stars. I'm just I, you have to read the reviews and see what you comes do. in. So read those reviews, everyone. All right. So, Nick, we've talked about, you know, kids and these breaks um, and ages. And you revealed that you had had a long discussion with a couple of illustrators. So tell us. (laughs) Tell us what they said. Well, both of them, um, one of them is an award-winning illustrator and won several awards. And I, I pretty much asked her about the process and how she works with an author and what and how she charges and w- what the expectations are. So, I mean, you know, you can expect, I mean, you're not giving away the farm or anything or too much, but, you know, there's an incisible investment for working with a, like an accomplished artist. Now, you can spend, say, uh, $5,000 maybe for a uh, 32-page book that had uh, full-page illustrations. Uh, of course, that would be different for a book that had like spot illustrations. And a spot illustration, for people who don't know, is just a small little piece of art that would be on the page, maybe next to text or something. Mm-hmm. So most of those authors, most most, I'm excuse me, most of the illustrators, uh, instead of working on an hourly rate, which can range anywhere from twenty five dollars to fifty dollars an hour, most of them work by a project because uh, they've become established enough to where they. Uh, we'll interview the author, see their, maybe look at their manuscript, talk to them about the age, you know, the demographics and the mm-hmm. style of art, and then they will give them a quote, but most of them do do a project, and that includes a variety of things. It includes uh, uh, setting up some guidelines, um, you know, getting a storyboard ready so that you get a concept in place for, and we'll use a 32-page book as an example, you know, um, to where text will fit to that into those parameters, and then uh, maybe some flesh out some ideas for um, the subject matter or the scenes or the, the way the story will go versus the illustration. So a storybook is essential for both both an illustrator and an, an author because you can at least, while it might be just scribbles, you'll get an idea of where your text will go and how the book will go from 
page one to page 32. Um, so that, and then, um, you know, some of them are that place will encompass and include um, revisions, because there's always revisions. There's revisions in text, so there's certainly revisions in artwork. Um, and then um, finals, and then... Um, so I, would, I think... And then setting up just payments and setting up uh, how the contract works. So you're working for hire, uh, or if you're... Uh, I don't want to get into too much of the details on that, because I don't really know, but some illustrators do get percentages and royalties, and you're probably more privy to that. Well, that would be very... Yeah, yeah. Well, sometimes they'll get in and sharing. Yeah, it depends on what they can do. Yeah, sharing. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's sometimes there can be a sharing. And when you're talking about, you know, the higher end, like, you know, when you and I worked uh, before Don Seidel retired, that it, he could easily get between four and $5,000 for a 32-page book. Now, you and I have seen authors pay many times that amount of money and we come away shaking our heads at it because you have to realize you got to sell a more than a truckload of books to recapture those yes, monies. Yeah. So I think setting up, you know, um, and then of course, if you're working with, uh, so you like the style of somebody on fiber and they're, they're a beginning artist or, or they don't have much of your experience with it. So they're just charging maybe by the hour or something. It might be a good idea to uh, um, just have a contract that's work for hire where you own all the art versus sharing any royalties. Uh, but mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of that just going to depend on, on your the author's budget and what their goals are. But I think um, you know, these guidelines are real important. Uh, and then finding out what they charge for revisions. So getting, getting those ducks in a row at the beginning is going to save a lot of... Uh, second-guessing and heartache in terms of uh, what to expect. I mean, but, you know, it is a sizable amount of investment. Uh, it is. You really yeah. need to find someone to, that you can work with and have an honest discussion about uh, your partnership together. Uh, this is, uh, you know, they're holding a lot of responsibilities for your book. Uh, so um, getting those ducks in a row real important. Yeah, my my. I have to tell everyone my preference would always be a work for hire thing. That you yeah, you own them; <laughs> they're your babies. Yep. Now, now and as a designer, that's what I. You know, that's how I push my work. I don't own the rights to anything. I, that I uh, so I've been. I, I can't see, uh, and I think most illustrators, especially beginning beginners, or at least lower level low, low level ones, can certainly uh, agree to that. But. There are some uh, more established designers that will want to do a share of that, but uh, well, they could. Um, I mean, and yeah. also, don't expect your your illustrator to turn over what what we would call native files. That you're going to walk away with everything. I mean, it is their copyrighted work that they've sure. created. And then also, I've seen Nick variations that well, if I can reuse the art in some other type of project then the cost is much lower versus it's exclusively just for you. So that's when you got to, you got to weigh out what's important for you on, yeah, on that. That's true. So all that stuff is like set up at the beginning instead of, um, you know, jumping right into it. I mean, establish some parameters and um, I think it's, uh, they're, good, they're good safeguards for the author, but it also reassures the illustrator that you've got a good working relationship with the author, because uh, they obviously want to do a good job. They're not, there's, they're not just in it for the money, they're artists. So they're, they, want, they want to have a good project and they want to win awards and recognition too. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a good, it's a, when it's a good match, it's really wonderful. And I've worked with, on a few projects that way that have just been really, uh, you know, brilliant pieces of work. So and I'm, I'm just such a big fan of children's books. I'm kind of a bit of a frustrated yeah. author. Illustrator myself, I've got a book in the works. I've had it for 20 years. I haven't finished it. Aha, so. uh aha. -huh. Uh -huh. Please do and do it. All right. Any other guidelines that if if uh, if an author was starting in down this path, is there kind of a, a, a one, two, three, four? You would say ask this, ask this, then this, then this, etc. Yeah. First, I mean, first, 
first things first is I ask them, um, um, can, like, say, can you match this style? If I'm sure giving you an example, that would, that would be really important. Uh, what are your rates? How do you work? Do you work by uh, il- per illustration? Uh, do you work by the hour? Do you work by the project? Uh, and then uh, can I get an estimate for a 32-page book, for instance? Uh, that would include two to three rounds of uh, revisions. Uh, you ask them, can they do that? Are they willing to do that? Uh, and then, but I think most often, most illustrators have a pretty much a, um, a framework for how they work with uh, authors in terms of this is what I charge and this is what you get. So mm-hmm. those, are, those are questions. And then, you know, are you doing... Um, are you doing, um, uh, can I, you know, like, should, what can I use the art for uh, marketing purposes mm-hmm. beyond mm-hmm. just the book? Uh, mm-hmm. Can I have that included in the price? Uh, do I need to purchase uh, anything other than the illustrations? In other words, do I need to purchase licensing for fa- special fonts if there's necessary, or is that something that the illustrator includes in this pricing? Because, you know, fonts are not a challenge, but they're a special kind of a thing for children's books. You, know, you want mm-hmm. the right font for the book, for the demographics. So. Mm-hmm. Oh, Nick, I remember one time I had a pile of books. I had, a, you know, they seem to go in runs when I'm working on them, and they were kids' books that I just had. And I went through every one of these books looking at these fonts, which ones that were popping out. They were easy to read, thinking of the age of the kid. All right. Mm-hmm. And and which ones were easy on the eyes? And there was one, I think it had pigs in it or something, but I, I remember scanning it and send it to you. And it was, it, I think it was called Lemonade. And we use yeah. that Lemonade font on a bunch of books because it was so versatile. It was. It was a casual font, but it was very readable. And um, I've, I've actually used a couple of other fonts for uh a certain age group that I like a lot. One of them is uh, it's called Bembo Infant. It's like B E N B O Infant. It's a uh, very readable. It's a serif font, but it's very readable, especially for beginning readers. And right. Hold on. To, hold on. To, to that is, yeah. Hold okay. on. We're going to take one more break, but we'll be right back. We're talking kids books to make them fabulous and page turners over and over. is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Discover the power of you and your book at the Judith Bryles Unplugged events. Each summer, Judith Bryles Book Marketing Unplugged unfolds over three intensive days working with just Judith. You get publishing strategies, author and book platforms, book marketing panache and pizzazz, and authoring tools to take you and your book to rock star success. In the fall and winter, Judith Bryles Speaking Unplugged includes Judith as your coach and mentor during two powerful days. You will learn how to structure a speech, how to create openings and closings, how to find gigs that pay you and sell your books, and you will get one-on-one coaching. Go to thebookshepherd.com and click on the events tab to learn how to participate at the next Unplugged Workshop event. First impressions are everything in the world of book publishing. Whether your book is an ebook, a print version, or both, your book cover needs to pop, sizzle, and sparkle to immediately capture the attention of your audience. And your book's interior needs to be just as dynamic and reflect the professionalism your readers demand. Nick Selinger of NZ Graphics has won numerous national and international book awards for his cover designs and interior layouts. 
With over 20 years of experience in graphic design, he knows what it takes to create award-winning books and the many promotional pieces that authors need, such as posters, banners, postcards, one sheets, business cards, logos, and more. Visit ncgraphics.com and see what authors and publishers have to say about their award-winning books and how NZ Graphics can make your book the success it was meant to be. That's nzgraphics.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. With me on Author You, your guide to book publishing is award-winning designer Nick Zellinger. And we're really talking about um, kids' books. And that I, this show came out of a conversation that Nick and I were actually having. That there's such a variable that we see when people go uh, print books like print on demand versus having a book manufacturer who this is what they do. They print books and they don't print one at a time. They're going to be printing many hundreds of them at a time. But the variables that we saw from bindings, from from types of paper, from uh, just sometimes even the crispness of the color. So this is why we started down this path um, for this episode today. So, Nick, um, what about some of the common mistakes that you see? Well, I think um, one of them is um, the, the re- reluctance or, or not, the author not conversing with the designer, the, the illustrator about uh, the size of the art. In other words, um, let's take, for instance, you're doing an uh, eight inch or eight inch square book, which is a pretty common um, size for a children's illustrated book to square, a square format. So um, they want a full page illustration. So the author, I mean, the author is instructing 24 to 32 illustrations. But they, if that, if they're full page illustrations, they need to bleed off the page, and the bleed is where they, they trim the, trim the book, and the art is going to the edge. But to go to the edge, the art needs to actually extend beyond the edge by an eighth of an inch to a quarter, quarter of an inch. So. There are some beginning illustrators that don't know that, so they'll do an eight inch by eight inch piece of art, uh, and it's too small for the for a bleed. And then sometimes it'll have critical matter like a, a hand or a face or uh, some element that needs to be inside the book, and that might get trimmed off. So an author needs to say, "I you know I'm doing an eight and a half eight by eight book, and I want full page illustrations, and you need to include." Um, quarter inch around of non-essential art that can be trimmed off so they can actually have the specs for, you know, right for that. So that's, that's, that's probably the most common thing that I've seen for the last few years of art that comes into me and I'm laying it out and I'm saying, well, I have to enlarge the art or go back to the illustrator to uh, fix that spec problem. Mm-hmm. It would be rejected. It would be rejected by any printer, whether it's print on demand or to just book uh, publisher. Mm -hmm. Um, Then, you know, the other common one is um, where does it go to get printed? I mean, so like, for instance, if you've got an illustration that has heavy coverage, in other words, there's dark colors, maybe it's uh, watercolor or maybe it's, you know, um, you know, some paint oil or something like that or even pencil, but it's dark and has a lot of, you know, it's going to take a lot of toner or ink, that's a challenge for print-on-demand because print-on-demand's really only got a couple of uh, varieties of paper that will accommodate a children's book. So it'll either be, we'll take, for instance, Ingram. They, have, they offer two, two kinds of white paper. They offer a 50-pound standard white, which would never work for a, uh, an illustration that has uh, heavy coverage because it'll wrinkle the paper, uh, the ink toner will become oversaturated, and uh, it'll just look flimsy. So the other uh, option is their premier standard, uh, I mean, excuse me, their premier paper, which is uh, 70 pounds, which is a little thicker. Mm-hmm. But a traditional book printer would might suggest something even heavier than that. 
you know, maybe an 80-pound to a 100-pound mm-hmm. uh, smooth coated. You have more options with a traditional book printer, especially for uh, children's books. And that will depend on the art that you have. Now, if you have a file illustrations or your background of the art is a little light and stuff, um, I think print on demand will work real well. We've done a number of books with uh, other artists that we work with that have looked pretty good on print on demand. But I think you want to avoid um, approaching the art that way. If if your intent is to use print on demand like uh, Ingram or Amazon KDP, uh, they have limitations with how much toner they can actually get on a page without it uh, messing up the paper or, you know, looking really shabby or falling apart. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and... Two major, two major uh, things to avoid, or at least uh, to investigate. Uh, so it's the quality of the art, and how detailed the art is, how dark it is, how much stuff it's got going on. <laughs> if, if it's really art that you really love and that's the approach you want to take and I think you need to investigate a traditional book printer and let them advise you on uh, uh, paper samples and paper th- thicknesses especially. Mm-hmm. Well the other thing is that you know we used to uh, actually plan a full-blown very common dust jacket on, on young kids books um, for them, and I am seeing much less of that now. That they're just doing a strict laminate hardcover. Are you seeing any variables? Yes. Yeah, you can. You can have a dust jacket over a uh, keystone laminate. They call it a keystone laminate, where the uh, art is actually uh, adhered to a board. So it's, and that's a preferred. Mm-hmm. I mean, that would be a preferred children's book to me instead of a soft cover. Uh, so you want something to last a little longer. But they used to. Still have the option to do a dust cover, but dust jacket, but uh, you know they don't last very long with children, obviously, maybe one time. So you don't see you don't see dust jackets too much with case down laminates these days, uh, but it's still available. And, and there is, I think Ingram also does a like a digital cloth cover. I haven't seen any of that yet. Uh, that might be an interesting texture for some art. Uh, for a children's book, but I haven't seen an example. I'd like to find out if I could get one from them. Mm -hmm. Well, I I can tell you, going back to the printing side of it, is that if you were to take a standard kid's book, the the big size, 8.5 by 11, let's say, and you up it so you have a premier uh, color, you're looking at printing that at $10 a book. That's that's what the cost Mm -hmm. would be. Typically, and I want all of you to understand this listening in, typically kids' books go, that the, the, for these kids who, who go through the books over and over, mom and dad reads them over and over and over and over again. That's why you want to have heavy paper that Nick was referring to. It's so essential. It's so essential. Um, and that if, if they're going through it, the price of the, of the, of the book is going to be $16.95, $17.95. All right, so if it's going to cost you $10 just to print the book, you can't afford to sell it retail. You just sell it yourself. And you're, you're thinking, I must be clueless here. Well that basically if you're selling retail, that you're gonna lose at least half of the retail value toward the distributor, towards the bookstore, fill in the blank, and maybe even more. So if we have a $17 book, half of that is $8.50, and how much did I say it was gonna cost to to print the book? $10. So you better figure out how you're gonna move this book or you print a bunch of them. Just just saying, Nick, I ha- I felt I had to throw that out. Yeah, it's true. And then if you've got a, if you're an author that's doing a series of books, say on a, mm-hmm. a certain subject matters for that, and you've got a you know whole plan of this, uh, thinking that you're going to sell them as uh, you know bulk or, or or a set of books or something, the challenge is you know exponentially even more so. So you you've got to figure out that uh, it's like Getting all these ducks in a row at the beginning, uh, that's not meant to discourage anybody, but there's that's the challenge of uh, any book, really. And the children's books, with all the added expense up front, 
um, you know, makes it even more challenging. Uh, so getting some research right away, you know, finding out, you know, the cost of the illustrator, finding out where you possibly want to go to print and not thinking, gee, if I, I spend all this money on all this, maybe I can lowball it on my printing. All that's just, you just really throwing away your project. So you do need to, do need to investigate. Uh, you can go online to Ingram and get a price calculator and figure out what the cost mm-hmm. of the book would be. You can call uh, book printers or call us and we'll give you, refer you to book printers uh, that can give you an estimate on on that. So you have, and at least you have a budget to look at and see where you where it falls into your you know your existing budget for the project. And then you know going back to the to, you know, the demographics and and what size you want the book to yes. be. You know. Uh, you know, there are a lot of variety of sizes, but a lot of that is just investigating books online and books that you like and saying, that's the kind of book I would like to have in my hands. That's mine. So that's that, that's what that's you're after. And then have all those, yeah. have that information ready for an illustrator too. You know, your illustrator saying, this is the book I have in mind. I want to have a, you know, a 10 by 10 book or an eight and a half by 11 book or whatever with full page illustrations that bleed off the page or if I just want spot illustrations with you know, my characters. Mm-hmm. But then you go back to the original point that you mentioned about making sure the artist can draw, if they're drawing, you know, they're inventing a character for you, does that character look the same in every page, you know, or, you know, at every, at every vantage point? Is it, <laughs> yes, it has he or she aged 10 years in the space of 32 pages? <laughs> That's a challenge. It is a challenge, and and that goes, it's going to come up. I I will tell all of you. I I think another thing that you need to understand, um, although we're going to have our take our final break in just a sec, because I I want to go through pitfalls to avoid and, and, and get more into these challenges. But here's one of the challenges, too, that if you're dealing with a regular printer, and that is called a book manufacturer, a regular printer, uh, that does this stuff blindfolded, you know, 24-7, is that they know how to work with bleeds. And kids' books, young kids' books bleed like crazy, meaning there is color all over the place. And it goes to the gutter and to the full margin, to the end of the pages. Isn't that right, Nick? Mm-hmm. All right, so. I see it as it must be trimmed off, yeah. Yeah, and so if they don't get that, um, and in print on demand, we have found that bleeds create some problems because their robots don't seem to recognize it as art. And 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 I'd love to have you come back and hit on that. We're going to take our final break, um, and we're dealing with Nick Zellinger. We're talking about kids' books and should you do one. is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and guide to collaborate with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You do not need more problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Riles will shepherd you through the maze and chaos. At times, she has had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher, by a publishing service provider, and sometimes even by the author. If you want author and book success, connect with her today at thebookshepherd.com. At Total Printing 
systems. Customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years' experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short-run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from 1 to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four-color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR, perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types including side sewing we provide warehousing kitting distribution inventory management a new print on demand facility streaming browser based ebooks and bookstore call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project you can also visit our website at www.tps1.com your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask if you want to write and publish a book if you want to be successful as an author your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask is for you stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics scenarios and strategies on what to do now to get you published so let's get back to the show and here again is your host dr judith Bryles. Okay, so kids, how to really soar if you if you've got writing children's books in your DNA and um, and, and Nick, before we go today, I want to make sure that you kiss on chapter books um, and and okay. some of that that wimpy you know the wimpy kid type of book because I think a lot of people say yeah. you know I could do something like that, but that I think it's it's really important to understand that that when Nick is talking about some of these pitfalls. To avoid, he mentioned to me one day that you know that there's just a lot of them are lazy mistakes. Well, that gets my attention, and, and I'd like to avoid lazy mistakes. So, where do I start? <laughs> yeah, I think you know. I think the tendency is for an author, and and maybe even even an established author, an author's written some other books that aren't children's books, is to think I can, I can write a children's mm-hmm. book. What's so hard about that? Well, it, you know, it's, it might seem like a no-brainer, but you really need to read children's books to know what children's books read like uh, because the uh, tendency for some authors is to kind of be a little bit too preachy, maybe too teachery. I mean, there's a subtle balance there of if you're, if you're trying to give a lesson to someone, a child, um, how to do that. You know, it's, it's, it's in the story, and it's a little bit more subtle than that. So it's, I'd suggest the first thing to do is read a bunch of children's books to make sure that you know how they're written and how they're you know, how they're approached and how kids will uh, accept that information uh, and how they learn from it, uh, and that comes with you know if you have a moral in your book, you know maybe not too heavy-handed about it. Uh, mm-hmm. So if there's there's some subtleties there that need to be done, and and the best books don't feel like they have a moral, but you know you come away learning something or having you know change your heart about something uh, mm-hmm. and then um you know on the on the illustrator side of it um uh, you know don't be uh, you know try to be creative in other words uh, when you're writing your, when you're designing your storyboard with author and illustrator if you've got a continuing dialogue from page to page well, don't have the same and this has happened with me on several books where the illustrations are almost identical from three to four pages. They're just somebody having a conversation, and the only thing I see is maybe the heads changing, and it's the same background and everything. That's just that's lazy to me on the, on the part of both author to you know, an illustrator. Maybe change it up. Maybe have the vantage point on the second page be the same conversation, but maybe it's from a bird's eye view or from the back view, and they're looking out at a field or something. But you need it. Kids... That's the first thing they see, especially young readers and, and kids from not quite uh, reading yet. They 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 want to be engaged with the picture, so you've got to give them variety on that. Uh, it's all, it's course, always about the picture. Yeah. It is for the young ones. It's always about the picture. So yeah, I remember the first time I ever saw a book, a children's book, an illustrated book, where that scene happened, where they were sitting sitting on a field or something. But then the next scene was like if it, you were, you were riding a tree looking down on them and I thought that was just 
brilliant. And it was it's just a subtle thing, but it, you know, it's obviously a different artwork in mm-hmm. the that, but that's what you want. You want that variety from page to page. Uh, so change it up. And then, um, you know, the big challenge is um, characters, you know, how to get facial, you know, facial expressions correct from different vantage points. And that's, a, you know, a big a, a illustrator is worth its weight in gold if they can do that. So you don't want your, especially if you're developing a character that can be consistent from book A, to, you know, you've got three books and you've got a continuing character. You want them to either um, stay the same age or maybe you want them to grow older. I'm not sure, but, you know, they need to be consistent. Same with clothing, especially animals. Mm-hmm. Uh, those are all challenges. Um, they certainly were the challenges that limited me as an illustrator because I just you know, didn't have the skills to do as much of that. But those are kind of lazy. Those are kind of mistakes that you can avoid by uh, doing the storyboard and having some discussions about scenes. You know, you're writing actually every page is a scene. Uh, yes, it is. is a, you know, the dialogue is, is uh, enhancing the scene. By the mm-hmm. So those are the kind of the biggest biggest things to look for at the beginning uh, to, and that's like, like fine, it comes across as fine tuning, but it's, it's important, I think, to, uh, um, you know, get those little things down right to make your book special and different. Uh, and the best books do that. They just have a lot of, uh, you know, they have a lot of variety and, and in teaching a lesson without becoming heavy handed. And uh, not assuming that kids' books are easier to, to write than adult books because they're not. Because it's very hard to write a, a good children's book uh, that a, a child will read uh, and learn something from. Nick, can you talk about? Uh, you know, I love back covers on all books. I'm crazy. I, I like well for my for books for adults. I always like to write the back covers for my clients, but. Talk about what works on a children's back cover because it is very different from a uh, a regular book. It is. It's 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 still <clears throat> marketing per se, but mm-hmm. um, but you're but you're you know the whole feel for the book is right on your back cover. In other words, it, it might be. Uh, Say it's a, you know, it might be a line or two from the actual interior of the book that is very uh, representative of uh, the lesson maybe that might be learned or something or the problem that they're confronting. Um, in other words, uh, Johnny never knew that his words could hurt somebody. Something like that. And then and the book is about obviously you know how to how to be kind, uh-huh. uh, how not to say something. Uh, you know, cruel, hurtful. So, yeah, yeah, hurtful. So th- those are things that you know. It's a different way. I mean, it's not. It's like this is a book. This is. It's not a synopsis of the book. And, and any book back cover should never be a synopsis of the book. But it's it's a teaser, and it, it's, it gives a feel and the nature of the book. So something like that, where you lead off with a with a phrase from the book that will lead the the reader to understand. This is the little journey that you know, little Johnny's taking or whoever is in, in the book mm-hmm. and what they may be learning from this. So because when a parent buys the book for the child, that's the that's what they're looking for. They're looking for say I need to you know, I need to have a book to show to my daughter and son about not being hurtful. And that's how you do it. So it's there's a little bit of sense of that. And then obviously you could pepper it up with spice it up with some uh, artwork, but um and it's not too verbose. It's not very, there's not not a whole lot of text on the back cover of a children's book. Sometimes if it's in verse, you know, it'll be some stanzas from a verse or rhyming and something like that. I love to pull verse out, out of it um, and bring it together uh, for kids in that process because that gives them a taste. You're not giving them the whole thing. Just something that, and, and then maybe whether you pull a picture, an illustration that went with that verse, but maybe there's something else. Because I think that this is the 
opportunity to uh, do a double hit. Your cover should be, you know, a grabber. Um, and but the back cover, there may be there may be just a favorite illustration on the interior that this would be ideal to pull it out to stag. Uh, both a, a young young one, it may be a young one's going to be with mom or dad, but also for the adult to say, oh yeah, Billy would love this. Billy would lo- uh, love this. He'll get a kick out of it. Any yeah. thoughts there? Yeah. I, I think that's that's really important, and, and that's it's not that difficult to do because you can um, you can find. I mean, obviously there will be. A, if you're working with a good illustrator, there'll be tons of uh, examples of them to pull some of that out. Maybe, mm-hmm. maybe it's possible for the, the illustrator or even a layout person like me to separate out, say, a character from the background, mm-hmm. and use the character just on the background. Maybe she's holding a puppy, and the book is about, uh, you know, rescue animals, mm-hmm. and uh, so you get a feel for that. So that it's it's good to keep it where it, it flows. And it's easy to read and it's fast to read, uh, but having having a representative figure or a, you know a character from the book or characters it's, um, would be really not difficult to do and um, not add to your cost at all. But I think it's really good versus just having straight text, especially when you're talking about full illustrated books. So. Yep, exactly. All right, I, one other thing. Can you kiss on, and we, we have like a minute left, but on, on chapter books, the, the, you have the Wimpy book, which is certainly a chapter book, but it's highly illustrated throughout. Not color, it's, it's you know, line drawing. I mean, how do you create that yeah. page turner for kids? Well, for chapter books, you no, know, I mean, there's a variety of them. I mean, you could have um, the one that I've done have had a, a lead-off illustration on the beginning chapter, um, sometimes, um, um, and then in, in the course of the chapter, you know, there'll either be a full page illustration on one side, or there'll be a spot illustration where the text wraps around the illustration. Uh, so there's, you've got a variety of ways you can do a chapter book uh, for kids with text. Um, mm-hmm. Sometimes you, uh, you know, if you're talking about a, a bunch of uh, ants or something, you can have, you know, the illustration of ants mm-hmm. going running up and down the page for uh, Ooh, I love it. after books. So you can, oh, you know, yeah. that kind that, of thing. That, so oh, and you can fun. do that through the course of the whole book. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, keep on keep on marching. B, you can even put tennis shoes on those ants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have that pile of sugar at the end, you know. So it's you can be really inventive with chapter books. Uh um, just by being a little creative and not um, yeah. not cluttering it up, but just giving you some atmosphere to every page, you know, especially with, um, you know, maybe younger readers. Younger, so, well, um, that's how they become more um, really aggressive readers, get that. Nick, we're out true. of time. My, yeah. Yep. Well, okay. Thanks. Thank you so much. And all of you, thank you for spending your hour with Nick Zellinger and myself. Nick's website is nzgraphics.com. And always remember, your authoring and publishing success is going to be up to you in the final end. part of your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host dr judith briles each week a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take you the author to the next level you'll learn tips and secrets on how to create strategize develop publish and achieve book publishing success by making one very simple change in your book's journey how to avoid the publishing predators how to create an author and book platform that rocks learn how to make a living with your words and your books learn how to publish a book that has no regrets and so much more for more information check out authoru.org where authors who want to be seriously successful go and judith's website thebookshepherd.com then join us again here next week for more it's your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host dr judith riles Brought to you by Author You and the Book Shepherd. Thursday evenings at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific on the Rockstar Radio Network.